Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about what you might expect from a technical UX interview. So usually when you're interviewing for UX roles, there's going to be different phases of the interview process. So typically you're going to have to walk the interviewers through your portfolio, right? Just so they can get an understanding of your UX process and kind of understand the level of UX craft and skills you have and types of types of projects you've worked on in the past and whatnot. They'll also ask you some behavioral questions just to get a sense of like your leadership abilities and you know how you work under pressure. Like they might say something like, tell me about a time you led a large design team or tell me about a time you solved an issue through design. Um, just to kind of get a sense of, you know, who you are as a person and like they want to hear you talk and they want to see if you can maybe interact with clients and more of the behavioral part. But what this video is about is more of that technical UX interview where you'll be given some sort of prompt and then either right there on the spot or you know in a certain time frame, maybe if it's a day or a week, you'll have to come back with some sort of deliverable um, in the form of wireframes or a prototype or whatever they ask you to come back with. But the idea is you'll usually be given a set of requirements and then they just wanna see your process. Now this, this might be completely interactive, like day of, like you might sit down with the interviewer and you might have the leeway to ask them a bit more, kind of poke at them, get a few more requirements out of them. Or they just give you everything up front and they say, go design this and let's see what you come back with. So this is kind of more the latter, like they're just gonna give you a scenario, they're gonna give you a bunch of requirements and they're gonna say, design this. And this is actually not that different from a normal day in the life of a UX designer, at least from my experience. Like oftentimes you'll come in as a UX designer, there's, especially in like these waterfall type projects, there's already usually been a whole analysis phase, right? Where um, business analysts on your team are working with the client to gather all the requirements for whatever you're building. Um, so these requirements come from users of the product. Um, they come from business leads. And usually you're just sent usually in the form of a large ass Excel document, just rows and rows of requirements. And they say, here, translate this into wireframes or prototypes. So sometimes you have something to reference already. Like if it's more of a redesign project, you'll usually have you know what was already built, plus all the requirements and enhancements that they want. Or sometimes it's completely net new. So you're just designing something from the ground up. So it all differs, but this is a pretty standard way of working actually. So. This is a pretty practical real world example here. So I actually came up with this prompt because I'm actually really into music production as well. I kind of do it on the side. Um, so I figured this would be kind of a cool topic to explore. Um, but anyway, here's the background. I'll just run through everything with you guys real quick. So a client needs your help designing the user interface of an online music production course. The client has already created video tutorials and organized them by the most important digital music production topics. There are six topics within the course. Number one, learning the software. Number two, intro to chords. Number three, sampling for dummies. Number four, melodies. Number five, bass lines. And number six, mixing and mastering. Each topic has five lessons. So I just made them all five for simplicity's sake. So these are your topics. And then with e within each of these topics, there are gonna be five lessons. This is an online video course something like a Skillshare maybe, or you know, off the top of my head, that, that could be something to reference here. Then there are some requirements listed. So number one, the user is able to view all the topics within the course and a short description of each topic before beginning the lessons for that topic. Number two, a user is able to view their progress per topic and progress per lesson. Number three, user has the ability to work in whatever order they choose, and this is both for topics and or lessons. Number four, the user has the ability to seamlessly switch between topics and lessons. Number five, when a user completes a lesson, the next lesson will begin automatically. Number six, when a user completes all of the lessons within the topic, the next topic will begin automatically. So those are the requirements. We have to make sure we meet all of those requirements. So your job, so this is like what the actual deliverable is. Create a low fidelity prototype slash user interface that, incorporate, that incorporates all of the above requirements. Use whatever design tool you desire. Limit yourself to 90 minutes. And this, this is 90 minutes here, but this could really mean any amount of time frame. Just limit yourself to a certain time frame, essentially. Feel free to show slash document any steps in your process. 
So it's pretty vague and pretty open-ended, and it seems like you're gonna have a lot of creative freedom to kind of display this however you want. The goal here though, is just to make sure we meet all of these requirements and we come up with the best possible user experience. Now it does say low fidelity. So what is low fidelity? Well, that doesn't mean just like do a shitty job. That just means we're not really concerned about visual design. We're not really taking into account colors and iconography, shadows, like these sort of icing on the cake, cake type elements. We are really concerned though with layout, functionality, user flows, interactions. Um, these are the things we're gonna focus on. Now, let's just pretend for the sake of this video series that we're doing this kind of on the spot. So we don't have time to really go out and kind of reference and rip off of other online video course type sites like a Skillshare or Coursera or these types of things. Which is why going into these interviews, it's expected that you have some kind of idea about UX best practices and what types of interfaces work best for what types of scenarios, if you will. So little caveat, let's just pretend we don't have time to like do any competitive analysis here. We're kind of just jumping right into a little bit of information architecture, a little bit of sketching, but jumping right into prototyping here. And I think this is a great prompt because I'm pretty tired of seeing people on sites like Dribbble just like posting, you know, finished visual comps of, you know, these beautiful interfaces, but they have zero context to them. So without any context to the problem that they're solving, like it's not that impressive to just share a finished project because, you know, this could not be what the client asked for, you know? If you guys are able to do this, this is ensuring that you're not only able to translate um, requirements into wireframes or prototypes, but you really kind of have a process driven approach to your design. So now would be a great time for you guys to maybe screenshot this prompt because in the next video, I'm going to share my process, like how I would attack this problem. And I think it would be cool to maybe compare our processes and our interfaces that we come up with um, because usually there's multiple ways to skin a cat, um, as they say. So yeah, definitely screen screenshot this, um, give it a shot. Let me see what you guys come back with. And you know, if you guys come back with something you wanna share, you can email it to me, I'll put my email in the description. And maybe at the end of this video series, I'll even share some of your work. So I think that would be really sweet. But uh, in the next few days, I'm gonna be posting my wireframes and how I kind of attacked this project and structured this. So. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. I'm really excited for the series. Um, it's gonna get progressively higher fidelity. So I'm gonna first, you know, just do exactly what this says and then I'll probably keep running with it and, you know, see where this goes. Um, I'm gonna be using Envision Studio for this, but you know, you guys can use any design tool as this says. So yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Definitely subscribe for part two and possibly part three. Um, this is gonna be a lot of fun and I'm really excited for it. Thanks again and best of luck.